Welcome to episode 13 of the Ultra RC Hobby Show. Today, we're going to talk about Tamiya. Chris is going to drive it. We're going to make fun of him before we have a rematch so he yes. can talk smack. We're going to be rebuilding a diff. So what's the difference the between diff? this diff and that diff? Ooh, all day. True gear diff. There's your difference. There's a difference. The difference. And then we're also going to have Chris's uh, build videos. We had some issues with time lapse and GoPro, but hey, we got it figured out, I think. For the and most part. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more and we'll start throwing those in kind of periodically through episodes now. So we've got to keep attention to that on future episodes. Welcome to episode 13. Let's get into it. That's the thing now. That's yeah. our thing. I, 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 I. I. Okay, it's still a seven. Do you want a diff? Yeah. What is this? This center diff? Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to be building, or I guess rebuilding, uh, ET48.3 diff. Uh, we get a lot of questions on how do you guys seal your diffs? What do you guys use for products? Um, how much do I fill the diff? All those fun questions. So we'll go through that tonight. Yes. Okay, so first things first, we took all the screws out because Techno, they give you really long screws. They're like you that guys long. Don't want to sit here and watch Times four. Screws, okay. Yeah. Chris is uh, screwing the thing. Okay, so first things first, let's split the diff. Uh, we need to take the uh, top bevel off, uh, which just pulls off. And usually what I like to do is use a pair of pliers uh, and pull everything apart just to visually check. Uh, check the bearings, um, check all the o-rings and other stuff inside this differential because there is going to be a washer and then an uh, o-ring on the bottom side. So that's what we're going to need to do and we're also going to need to pull the spiders out of this. So you can see how gross this oil is. This is like two race meats um, so you should really check your diff oil more often than not every 45 minutes to an hour is never a bad idea. I think it's one of those things that always gets unchecked, especially if you have a Traxxas slash or anything. Yeah. Drive it for two years and never check the diffs. They get pretty empty and the truck's handling really gets affected. Holy Fred. Throwing stuff in front of you. think we have a Cow RC magnetic mat. Yeah. Mad, yeah. yeah to hold everything together. Yeah, so we're using the uh, Avid full ceramic bearing kit on this. So we got rubber shielded on one side and metal shielded on the other. Yeah, so with, uh, with this setup on the bearings, like Chris said, there's going to be a rubber shield on one side and the other side's actually going to have a steel shield. Um, so what we're going to gain by having uh, one rubber, one steel, is the rubber is still going to keep all of the dirt and debris out, um, but the metal shield is actually going to have a little bit less resistance, um, so a little bit uh, easier rolling of the truck, which any little advantage is an advantage, and they do tend to last a little bit longer being ceramic versus just double rubber. So, so what we're going to do here is we're going to clean all this stuff up, and get all, well, most of the old oil out. Since we're just putting uh, the same exact oil in there, I don't normally go too crazy cleaning it, um, but. Now if you are changing all the oil, what do you do to get all the old oil out? Yeah, honestly, brake clean? <sighs> brake clean's cool. Yeah. You just really have to make sure if you are gonna use brake clean. Look at the seals. Not the seals, yeah. and you wanna buy non-chlorinated yes. brake clean. Um, the chlorinated brake clean will actually start eating the plastic parts um, and start causing uh, some issues that way. So uh, honestly, what I tend to use is the Simple Green or Cow RC, yep. that chassis clean the that chassis they have. Yep. Really awesome. Oh, it, it actually uh, breaks down this uh, silicone oil pretty good. It's the only thing about the other than Simple Green yeah. that we can actually get the residue out of the diff case and shocks. That's always the hardest thing when I rebuild diffs is getting all the old oil out so you can put the nice clean stuff in. That's really getting annoying. Let's put that over there. Okay, so normally what I like to do is start on like a, an older rag and then work to a clean one. So again, just getting everything a good wipe down. This diff is relatively new, so we were worried about a little bit of metal filings and stuff in the oil. Um, just because all the gears are going to start to break in uh, and everything's going to start to wear in that way. So uh, it's always one thing that we like to check on all our diffs. Okay, so now I'll wipe these bearings down and we can start assembling. So with these double 
uh, different seal bearings. What you really want to make sure is you have the rubber shield facing out and the steel shield facing in. Um, so with this rubber shield facing out, uh, it's not going to allow any of the dirt and debris to get into the bearing uh, and then the metal shield gets protected by the spur gear face. So since we're doing a center diff, uh, you get a spur gear instead of a ring gear, but it's pretty much the same thing. So next on the agenda is uh, putting the out drives in, uh, cross pins and all that stuff. So first thing, uh, you can use the low C, uh, high pressure black grease associated makes it. This is the techno stuff, we get it in all our kits. Um, so we do stockpile this stuff up pretty quickly. Um, so what I like to do on all of my ring and bevels uh, and diff cases is you take your black grease and you're gonna wanna put a little bit inside where the O-ring goes and just need a little bit there, throw the O-ring in. Uh, and then I like to put just a little bit on top of the O-ring and essentially all this is doing is sealing this diff up and it's gonna pretty much prevent any of the oil that's gonna come through the diff uh, and be pressured out and gonna run out of your out drive. So another thing you always wanna do is always wanna seal the out drive as well. On the Techno, it actually has a bevel for where the O-ring sits. Um, so again, just a, a quick little dab of grease on that as well. And this just gets pushed through. A big tip that I always uh, say, which is gonna sound really, really dumb, like honestly, people are gonna be like, why did you say that? That's kind of a waste of time. Make sure you have a bearing here. You're gonna yeah. get your diff all together, <laughs> and then you'll be like, oh, let's throw it in the car. But the problem is now you have to take the out drive out, which in most cases, you always forget it on the case side. So all the fresh oil you just put in there is gonna go for naught because you're gonna have to take it all apart. So always make sure you tip. put the bearing on first. Pro tip. I've made that mistake. <laughs> That's a pro tip. It's almost like I've made the same mistake yeah, multiple you'll times. Learn from making the mistake. <laughs> yeah, so this is the same thing applied. Um, just gonna put the grease on the bottom of the case there, uh, slap the O-ring in, and then put a little bit more grease on top of that O-ring. So you can speed this up, I guess. You can honestly just cut this trap. It's up to you. You're the one holding me. boring I'm just saying I'm not a really all that fancy high-tech guy I don't really talk all that much and all these people on this YouTube channel are like I beg to differ I watched all your other episodes and you talk the most kind of annoying I get it again keep the bearing on there and make sure it's on <laughs> sorry just like yeah no rip it, repeat it over and over <laughs> yeah. so this one's usually the funnest pin to get in um, usually the biggest challenge trying to get it in the case that's where needle nose pliers comes in really handy yeah so. Ta -da. okay so now next thing is uh, putting our side bevels or our spider gears on the shafts so one thing that I did notice uh, on some diffs is when you put the bevel gear or the spider gear on the shaft it doesn't actually rotate freely it has like a big casting mark um, on the inside of the bevels so just make sure that your bevels do rotate freely on the shaft and make sure when you put this together that uh, everything still moves freely in the diff give it a spin make sure you don't have any hard spots or any teeth that are rolled over uh, so your diff isn't gonna move freely Yeah, unlike with the Technos, there's a double flat spot oh, on the yeah. shaft, so you have to get them um, inside the case, and they just push right down. My fingers are sticky, and I'm having like, a heck of a time. Again, people are like, what are you doing, you idiot? There we go. So yeah, again, just make sure everything moves freely inside that diff. 
make sure we don't have any rolled teeth. So now this is the, the fun part. Well, not really the fun part. This is the part that honestly takes the longest. So what we need to do is we're gonna put uh, Flashpoint uh, 12,500 weight diff oil in the center diff. So you can probably see that there's a whole bunch of writing on this diff case. Uh, what we like to do is take a paint marker and actually write on the diff case or write on the ring um, what weight oil we're using in there. Sometimes you forget and you're like, oh, am I actually changing it in a good way yeah. or am I putting the exact same oil that I already have it's in there? It's always good to have that reference. Yeah, so yeah. we just put that on there just as a reference. Um, so now we get to fill it up. You always want to make sure the bubble gets to the top of the bottle and just start filling it up. So normally I put quite a bit in there right off the top and just let it sit. So we can just time lapse this. We just like twiddle our thumbs, yeah. do whatever we're doing. Chuck's like, this is really boring. I'm still holding the camera. But we need to wait for all the oil to come out. Or oil to come out. We need to wait for the air to come out of the oil. The oil there we go. Down. So normally I'll just spin it a little bit and there'll be some really big air bubbles that come to the top. So you can see them like there and there this big huge air bubbles so when you rotate these spiders you'll actually bring those um, from underneath the spider up to the top and it's going to take a little bit less time um, for the diff to sit here in shocks you don't want any air in the system no nope, correct yeah if you have air that's normally what happens when they leak honestly is they pressurize with that uh, air in there and then they'll find any way out right it's just like water it's gonna find the easiest point of releasable release release yeah, yeah release so it's usually gonna come out the out drives uh, or it's gonna come out of this blue seal there it'll come through the thread so uh, just make sure that there's no or little air in there as possible so now most of that air is going to be out there uh, and we can continue to fill. Uh, filling these diffs, um, I always use the rule of thumb of a little bit uh, of oil just on, underneath the top of the spiders is perfect. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything more than that or it's just going to come out the screws. You still have to accommodate for the other side gear going in, so you don't want to fill it right up. Yeah. surface is clean. Oh, Chuck, you can get a, a video of that. Just kind of right on the top of the spiders, there's a little bit of clearance and you can see that they're dry. Uh, normally that's how I like to fill my diffs. Uh, and then again, you can give it a quick rotate uh, and just make sure that there's no extra air in there that's taking up some extra space and we get actual, all the oil underneath the gears as well. So now becomes the f tricky part. So we got to get this ring gear and this seal lined up with the case without rotating and breaking that seal. That's that's the hard part. How do you do it? Well, how I do it is you can throw a screw in here, like so. We'll throw a screw in there and just push down that seal. If it does lift up, lift up, just like that. And then we'll grab our tool that was rolling around the counter and making all that noise. I'll just follow it down and start threading it. And then the cool thing is we can just follow that screw and use it as a guide and then drop this right on like that. So we used a smidge too much. So that just ensures that we have this case full of diff oil. So give it a quick wipe. Now what you want to do is you always want to go cross pattern on these screws uh, and I always like to get all of them started before I tighten any of them down. Um, so we'll work in a cross pattern of one, two, three, four before we tighten anything down. Get them all started, make sure they're not crooked or going in crazy. So this last one, this is now what we'll make number one and we'll snug it down. Again, don't tighten it, just get it snug. So the last couple threads before you're tight and stop and work to the next one. 
So how's that local sports team doing? I heard the Rush are like Western Finals. Or no, are they in the finals now? I don't know. You don't follow sports? I don't follow sports. Well, I cars are tiny cool. cars. <laughs> cars are way cooler. Last one. All right, so like I said, we just have all of them snug now. Uh, and now the biggest thing is you always wanna make sure you rotate as you tighten. Uh, you don't wanna really get this ring gear offset. You always wanna try and get it as like flat as possible on this uh, case. Cause if you tighten like one side, too much too fast you can actually put this spur gear at an angle and force it down not even uh, and that's when you'll start having a lot of issues with finding gear mesh especially on uh, ring and pinions like on the rear case or front diff um, so I just like to tighten them all down evenly and give it a quick spin it's not chunky it's still smooth and I know there's a little bit more that I can tighten it without causing an issue and you don't need to go like Arnold Schwarzenegger tight you just need them snug yeah nice and smooth nice and free you got some diff action let's give her a wipe what do you think mr. mechanic Ooh, yeah that feels really nice nice and smooth no jarring didn't break good it good job Woohoo! so that is how you fill a diff Traxxas diffs HPI diffs low C diffs any other diff There's except no diff. for a ball diff. There's really no yeah. diff, as Chris said. Ball diffs are a little bit of a different story. They're a cruel mistress. But uh, yeah, this is filling a gear diff. This is what makes these cow RC mats awesome. You drop a body clip, it's there. The cool thing is, you flip this mat over, the body clips are still there. These things are probably the best thing I've ever yeah, purchased. It's all I'll build on. Yeah, I have all my kit builds on here. I have an extra one of these in the trailer for when you go to races. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all we ever work on. So huge shout out to Cow RC Performance Products. Awesome products. Yeah, thank you guys for making awesome stuff. You guys rock. Uh, so Aaron, you want to do some slidey skids or something? Some slidey skids. Yeah, I, I like slidey skids. Mm. We're here with Jesse and Sean. Uh, they're also going to be doing some slidey skids with us. You probably remember Jesse. Oh, yeah. He was way back in episode number, <laughs> what was it, number two? Yeah, yeah way back in episode number two. Uh, and he is going to show Chris how to drift. Yeah. He has an MST. RMX 2.0. RMX 2.0. So he upgraded from his last car because it wasn't good enough for Jesse. Jesse's really high class. But yeah, let's go slidey skiddy and things. Stuff. Stuff. Shit. Drifting, sliding. Yeah, squeeze. Smash. Smash. <laughs> <laughs>
that was the episode 13. 13. 13. 13. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, throw some likes and comments and on subscribe. this video. And some shares to all your friends. But remember, comments get Q&A questions. Yes. And the more and more comments we got, uh, the easier it is to do Q&A. I think next week means you're going to have to have another race. Uh-oh. What do you think? I'll race the outside. Yeah, exactly. We're going outside with those yeah. cars. We're Same going cars from earlier. Yeah, we're going slidey skidding outside. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'll leave you a car to practice with. Yes, finally. It's not fair. You get to take them home all the time. I know, right? Yeah. I it's almost like they're your car or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's episode 13. Thanks Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share on Facebook yes. with all your friends. And Chris is gonna go pew 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 pew. pew. Yeah, do that. He did. Just do stuff. Yeah.